It is my birthday week! Or it's my actual birthday, depending upon when this is uploaded. Regardless though, this time of the year, I always get a bit nostalgic. I always look back at my previous accomplishments, look back at my previous selves, and see how much I have grown. Or in the case of this video, look back at anime that had an impact on me. I'm sure we can all remember those special anime that started our adventure. It could be Pokemon, maybe even Yu-Gi-Oh! Or maybe you start off a bit hardcore. It could be One Piece, Naruto, even Dragon Ball. While it may be your first anime that started you on your journey, it's usually the anime that come after it that impact you along the way. I'm talking about those special animes you stumbled upon that turned you into a fan for life or remind you why you're a fan of anime. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. I'm going to be giving you guys five anime that have changed me. And what do I mean by this? I mean anime that have made an impact on me while growing up. Anime that have made an effect on my life. Or just hold a very special place in my heart on when that I started watching it. So let's get the important stuff out of the way guys. These are of course my personal opinions. These are just five anime that I chose to pick out and talk about that made an impact on me personally. You're more than welcome to go to the comment section down below to let me know if you think these are positive opinions or negative opinions. Or if you just want to let me know what anime has impacted on you, leave it all down in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, why don't you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It really helps this channel out, especially since a vast majority of you are not subscribed. Please subscribe, we're getting closer and closer to 1000 subs. So with all out of the way, let's go to the first pick. I think a good place to start off is one that has haunted me for years. And that one is Rave Master. This series follows our teenage protagonist Haru Glory in his search to gather the five rave stones, along with his amnesia comrade Ellie and Musica, the leader of a band of thieves. Together they try and stop the evil of the Shadow Stones that took out one tenth of the planet 50 years ago, before the evil organization Demon Card brings it about again. And what makes this anime series a lot more interesting is that it was created from Hiro Mashima, the same mind who brought us Fairy Tail and Eden Zero. So already you know we're getting something action packed. But what did I mean at the beginning when I said this was haunting me? Well you see for me, Rave Master came out on TV when I was still a child and when I got into the series it was already getting rotated out. So the only thing I remembered about the series was one scene in particular about a sword that can cut things that can't be cut. This was the time before I was even allowed on the internet, so give me a break. This scene was haunting me in my mind for years. I couldn't remember what the sword looked like. All I remember was that saying, it can only cut things that can't be cut. I eventually remembered one extra detail about that series that just never left me as well. The girl's name was a set of numbers upside down. So when I started watching anime, something clicked inside my head that told me it was definitely anime that I watched back then. It took me years and years of watching anime, but I still did not find it. Until my friend recommended Fairy Tale. Something about it looked so familiar. The characters, the storyline, but something didn't add up. The scene did not appear, but I felt like I was getting close. Until I stumbled upon a video on YouTube that talked about English dubbed openings. And then they revealed to me the opening for Rave Master. I knew I had to watch it. Something was drawing it to me. Until I got to episode 19 to 24, Out of Time, part 1 through 6. And I instantly found what I've been looking for for years. Haru unlocked RuneScape. The sword that can cut through things that can't be cut. And Ellie was the girl that I vaguely remembered. The name that turns into numbers while upside down. And just like that, I had to continue watching the series. So I could finally get some closure for the anime series that haunted me for years. And I have to say, it was completely worth it. Especially since I learned that it was still connected to Fairy Tale, even after all this time. 
But I have to say, after all this time, Wraith Master is still held in high regards for me. That's mainly because of the fact that it was haunted in my mind for years, only remembering RuneScape and bits of Ellie. But if it wasn't for Wraith Master, I wouldn't have been watching a load of anime that I watch now, thinking it was the anime series I watched when I was younger. Then again, looking back on it, I should have been paying attention to the age rating. There is no way an 8 year old would have been watching Rosalian Vampire on TV. Next one up is one that took me completely off guard, Hori Mia. I've talked about this anime multiple times before on this channel. It involves our popular girl Hiori and a classmate who is distant, Miyomura. But after a faithful encounter, these two start being close friends and eventually showing that opposites can attract. With Hori showing her sides that she never shows in her school, and Mia Mora starting to open up a bit more, even getting friends thanks to Hori. And I've gotta say, what hits this anime home to me even harder is that I was a bit of an outcast at school. This anime literally shows that it's okay to be different, and that you'll eventually find someone that will accept your differences. And what shocked me even more that this anime has such a good grip on me is that I only started watching it last year. I came across some clips on TikTok, got interested, started watching Hori Mia, and then I was instantly hooked. I absolutely fell in love with the first season, instantly bought it on DVD, and when I learned Hori Mia was getting a spin off series, Hori Mia The Missing Piece, which dives into stories that they didn't tell in the first season, I was instantly hyped. And yes, Missing Peace was just as amazing as the first season, so much so that I dived into the lore even more, wanting more Hori Mia. So much so that I even watched the first attempt at an anime, Hori Santa Mia Morakun. And I gotta say, love the first attempt, because it shows us a bit more of Mia Morakun and how he coped with being an outcast. Even the sort of dark stuff that they kind of glossed over in the anime. Hori Mia is definitely one of those romantic animes that have stayed with me far longer than any other romantic animes I've watched. Anytime I see a Hori Mia clip on YouTube recommended to me, I instantly go and watch it and start re-watching Hori Mia again. That has never happened before with any romantic anime. It hasn't happened with Love Chinebule, it hasn't happened with Toradora, it hasn't happened with Skill Teaser Tagaki, it just hasn't happened with any other romantic anime. I'd love to get a continuation, maybe with the group in college, or maybe as adults. But with just the school series, it's still a masterpiece in my book, and one I'll definitely go and watch again and again. Next one up is one that rumbled the world, Attack on Titans. I couldn't resist making that joke, I just couldn't. So what's Attack on Titans about? Well, it's about the last remnants of humanity staying behind three giant walls in order to protect them from the Titans. Giant naked humanoid creatures that eat humanity. And hidden inside the wall is Aaron, a young boy who admires the Survey Corps. A group of people who go out and fight the Titans in the name of humanity. Until Eren's wall gets attacked by a titan who is over 60 meters tall and titans go in and evade his home, even killing his mother. So Eren, along with his friends Mikasa and Armin, vow revenge against the titans and in hopes to unlock the mystery behind titans themselves. So how did Attack on Titans make an impact on me? Well, this series came out when I was in college and back then, I wasn't into horror stuff like that. I'm still not even into horror now. I'm pretty sure if any of you guys catch my streams on Twitch, you know Ayn Zaku likes to wind me up with that. But Attack on Titans was getting quite a big boom at the time. There wasn't an anime fan out there who hasn't heard of Attack on Titans or at least given it a try. And I was one of them that did not give it a try. So in college, I was chatting with a friend and he said I should at least give it a try despite it not being my thing. So I went up to the library, popped my butt down, watched Attack on Titans, and I could not look away. I got so engaged with the story, the characters, their will to survive. I was instantly hooked. 
And with there being such a big time gap between season 1 and 2's release, I instantly started buying the manga to get myself prepared for what the story was going to give us. I even started watching the live action movie, don't do that. And even to this day, Attack on Titans is probably one of the only few horror anime that I get excited to watch. It is horror, right? Okay, it's not horror, but there's a load of gore, military, with a survival aspect. The same thing! The story still stays the same, I'm still not a big fan of gore even now, but Attack on Titans is definitely one of the most gory things I get excited to see. I enjoyed it so much that I bought the official Attack on Titan game and still enjoy zipping around even now. And I became such a big fan of it, I ended up buying my own Attack on Titan swords. On an unrelated note, if you ever hear about a guy in the UK suddenly zipping around holding two swords in his hands, it's not me. But still, I'm so glad I got into Attack on Titans. It was such a great story and it did leave me a bit more open minded to anime like that. I'm not exactly jumping to watch any anime like that, but it's maybe a bit more open minded to them. As for the next one, it's a bit of a curveball for you guys. Rosalian Vampire. I know what you're all going to say, but can I just say, you're wrong. At least let me get through the story before you start judging. It involves our main character, Skune, somehow being transferred to a monster school, where he ends up having to try and hide his identity. He then interacts with another student, Mocha, who is said to be a vampire with Skune ending up being her very first friend. And after learning that he's been in a monster school and that his life is in danger if he stays here, he tells Mocha that he's human and he tries to run away, with Mocha chasing him down and even changing to her alternate self in order to save him. So together along with their new friends, they protect Skune's human identity and end up getting closer together. And I may as well put it here, it is my first ecchi anime. But it's my first edgy anime that I got really engrossed into the lore. I got excited to see what kind of new monsters we get introduced to. I got interested to see how Skune would help take care of the student that attacks them. I really got worried during the end of season 1 when the group had to take on the security committee. And I really loved in season 2 that we got introduced to Mocha's sister. And I got really hyped for the season 2 finale when Skune was taking on Mocha's father. Though it does make me really want a reboot for this season. As much as I love Rosalind Vampire and it holds a special place in my heart for getting me introduced to the etchy genre. Though it's more tamed compared to all the other stuff I end up watching. I do understand a lot of the fan base that the manga is better. So much so that I finished the first season of the manga and started getting the second season despite it being a library book with the original artwork being teared out. Now that is just mean. I just wanted to see pretty ladies. Regardless though, Rosalian Vampire holds a special place in my heart for introducing me to the edgy genre, a tame version to be fair. And I always love it for being one of the first few mainstream anime that I got into. And finally guys, the last anime that really smashed me good, My Hero Academia. I can feel the looks, but please wait. The story revolves around Izuku Midoriya and how he's going to become the world's greatest hero. Being one of the very few people in his world that does not possess a power. Who then gets encountered by the number one hero All Might who learns has the same dream as him. And decides to give the powerless boy his quirk. One for all. So after claiming All Might's power, Izuku finds himself in the school of his choosing and begins his journey to become the best hero he could be. I learned about My Hero Academia during the end of season 3, so much so that I ended up buying the box set of it, binge watching it, loving what I saw, and ended up buying the video game. Old time viewers would remember that I ended up doing a playlist on it years ago. I even came up with the My Villain part before the My Villain arc began. Isn't that a coincidence? But I ended up loving My Hero Academia. I love all the characters. I love the whole story behind it being what makes a hero. I'm pretty sure Marvel and DC fans can say which one is their favourite hero. But a lot of them would say that it's because of their powers and what they fight for. But not what makes them a real hero. 
My Hero Academia takes the time to explore the psychological sides of it, the cause and effects of being a hero and a villain. And what makes it so interesting is that villains don't always start off as these bad guys who just want power. They could start off with people with good intentions or just got given a bad hand thanks to society. I really love that this season really focused in on that and with the manga wrapping up at the time of recording, I really can't wait to see how the story comes to an end. And of course if any of you guys were wondering, yes I did ship Uraka and Deku together. Can you blame me? I really love their interactions together. Also, I'm the type of guy that can separate his anime with the fandom, so I can really appreciate the show what it is and can see why fans are not really like. It also helps as well that My Hero was actually the first fact video I did on this channel, involving around Bakugo's voice actor. So I'm really thankful for My Hero Academia starting me off on my Did You Know Anime Facts series that I do here on this channel and giving me a whole load of facts I never knew that I would end up coming across. Some that I know even you lot are thankful for, so let's be thankful for My Hero Academia for that. And there we have it guys, these are 5 anime that have changed my life. But honestly, that's not the end of it. There are still plenty of other anime out there that have changed me in some form or another. So make sure you hit that like button to tell me you want more of this kind of content and I'll probably do another one in the future. Regardless though, I still really enjoy these five anime and these are anime that I'm really wanting to jump into watching again and again. So with all that out of the way, there's only one thing left to say. What do you think? Do you think these anime have changed me for the better? Do you think these anime have changed me for the worse? Leave it all down in the comment section down below and don't forget to let me know what anime have changed you. Leave it all down within the comment section down below. And don't forget if you like my content make sure you hit the subscribe button and check out all the other videos I've done on this channel. And I think that just about does it. I'm gonna go re-watch Rave Master and Hori Mia. So until next time guys, this is me, signing out, bye bye.